This is what your email inbox should look like. If it looks more like this, you're doing it wrong. Even if you receive loads of emails every day, you can still achieve inbox zero. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start showing you here on my computer. And what you need to know here is that I'm already doing the zero inbox technique. So it's not gonna be that full, but I'm gonna show you the principles of it and you are gonna have to imagine that I have thousands and thousands of emails. So the first thing you should do is to go through the latest like a hundred or so emails just to remove any newsletters that you don't want to receive. So like for example this one. Okay, so there you go. I have removed those and then <laughs> all of this is just YouTube comments. I saved them to have some have some stuff for you to show. And the next thing you should do when doing that, because the other tab is quite good for doing this, because most of your newsletters should end up in the other tab. But what I want you to do next is to go to view and show focused inbox. Because why would you want to have an other tab? If you receive that many junk emails, then you should unsubscribe to them. If they're not worth having in the focused inbox, they're not worth being in your inbox at all. So this way you will have all of your new emails in the same place. Another way to quickly unsubscribe from emails is to use an unsubscription service. So like for example, Unroll Me, I believe I've heard people using. Apparently it's not available in the EU area, but all of my American followers and maybe in other parts of the world, you could probably use this and it will go a bit quicker. I prefer like going through it myself, but if you have loads of emails, then this is a great way to unsubscribe from all of the junk that you get. And the next thing you want to do is that you want to create a folder. Let's see here, new folder, name it like uh, before 2022 or whatever, name it, whatever. And then you just take all of the emails and you move them there. Problem solved. Zero inbox achieved. Now, no, it's not really that simple. If you only do this, you don't have the right habits to keep this up. But like, this is the quick way to just start from scratch. I don't think it's reasonable for anyone to go through all of your thousands of emails that you have. So just spend a bit of time, move them into another folder and then like forget about it. I mean, they're still going to be there, but they're not going to be in your inbox. Okay, so the first thing you need to do to set up your habits right is that you need to stop using folders. There are maybe like three or four folders that you actually should be using, but you should not be categorizing all of your emails into different folders. And the way that you should do it is to use the archive function. The archive is a built-in function in Outlook, and I believe the same exists in Gmail. So like, it's the way they think you should do it, right? So what you should be doing is to use the categorize function. And the pros of using categories instead of folders is that you can assign several categories to the same email. You don't have to choose if it goes into the project folder or your whatever folder, because sometimes you want to sort it into both YouTube and important information. Like, you don't have to pick one folder, you can pick all of the categories that you want to. And that means you don't have to look through a million folders ever again. <laughs> so what you do is that you basically set up a categorization system that works for you. You just pick all categories and then you pick new, name it, give it a color, and then you're good to go. So think it through. It could be like, it depends on if it's your work email or your personal email, but it could be project based. It could be type of information based, work stream related, like, you know what works for you. And this is something that you just can keep expanding upon. So that is the way that you should use it. You should use the built-in archive function together with categories, and then you will store all of your future emails in the archive when you've gone through it all. Okay, so now we're gonna set up the folders that you actually do need to have. So here you have the archive. This is a built-in function, really simple. You just click backspace, and then the email ends up in the archive. 
And since it's a built-in functionality, there are lots of buttons that you can use. You can click this archive button up here as well. So it's really a folder that you should use. Then there are two alternative for what you can do with things that you need to do things about. Because in your inbox, when you go through it, you're gonna have some emails that you respond to at once, some that you just delete and like you go through it quickly, but some you might have to look something up, you need to make a presentation and send that or whatever. And with those types of things, you have two options. If you're a person who uses your email as a to-do list, like you're one of those people who email yourself with things to do, I would say make a to-do folder. So just click new folder, name it to-do, and then I would say go into the properties of it and then show the total number of items and then apply. And that way you will see like how many emails you have in your to-do uh, folder. And the other option is that you just leave them in your inbox. I know like this goes against the zero inbox technique, but this is something that I found works for me. I sometimes feel like I'm afraid to lose things if I put them into a separate folder, like I, I don't see them quickly. So I keep them in my inbox. Also, I don't receive that much email like compared to people who gain huge and huge amounts. So it's quite easy for me to have it in my inbox, like all the to-do items. But those are basically the two options. Either you make a separate folder for everything that you need to do and go through, or you just keep them in your inbox. And I will say that depends a bit on your preferences and the amounts of emails you receive. The next thing you should have is a reference folder. References. And you're gonna be like, Emily, what the hell is that? And I'm gonna tell you. The reference folder is where you keep things that you don't have to look at it to know what to do but you have to do something about it later. So for example, if you're working with a PowerPoint and you need some kind of input that someone sent you in an email, you don't need that email in your to-do list because you already know you're working with a presentation, but you need it in your references folder to access that information when you need it. Or it could, for example, be if you're invited to an event, like you have the event in your calendar, there's nothing weird about that, but then you have the additional information in another email. That is the perfect email to put into references. So it's basically pretty much a middle step before you actually archive something, because even if I do agree, it's easy to find things in the archive. If it's an email that you have to access like a couple of times in the next week, I would put it in the reference folder instead because that would just make it so much easier to, to find it quickly. And then when the event is over or your PowerPoint is done, then you just archive it then. And remember that the goal of this folder is also for it to be empty. So as soon as you're done with anything, get it out of this folder. We don't want it cluttered with a lot of things, but like move it to the archive as soon as you're done with it. And there's also an optional folder for the, you that you can use. I don't use it, but you could also add a reading list. If you're a person who receives a lot of articles or whatever like information you want to read, you can put it in your reading list. Oh, and the same thing for the reference folder. Go into properties, show total number of items and apply so that you know how much is in there. Now it's empty, so it doesn't show anything, but that way you do know. And the same for the reading list. So. The inbox, the to-do list, the references list, the reading list, and the archive are pretty much the only folders that you need to have. And it's only the to-do references and reading list that you actually have to set up yourself. And then we also have this folder with the old emails that we just shoved in there because, you know, we don't want to go through them. Seriously, nobody has time for that. So now when we set everything up, you have your folders, you have your categories, you don't have your stupid other inbox. Now it's time to go through what to do with your daily email management. And the first thing that I recommend you to do after setting this all up is that for 
the next month or months. When you go through your email inbox and you have received any junk mail that you don't want to receive, any newsletter that you don't want to read, you know you're not going to read them, unsubscribe from all of that. Because those are things that are just cluttering up your inbox. It makes you receive notifications that you don't want to have. Just get rid of those. So don't just delete them, actually unsubscribe to them. And that way your email management will be so much more easy because you won't receive as many emails. And then what you do when you actually go through your emails is that you are going to try to have the one touch principle. You look at an email and then you decide what to do with that email. So your options are that you can delete it, which you can do with like newsletter or things that you've like read, you know you're not going to need the information later. You can just delete it. Also, if you have an email where someone just says thanks and a smiley face, you can delete that also because you're never going to need to find exactly that email again. You're, maybe you have to find another in that conversation, but not exactly that email. So you can just delete those. And delete, you can just do with the delete button on the keyboard. Super simple. And then the next option is archive. And the archive is for things that you might maybe want to find someday later. You store in the archive. So you just set a category and then you can click backspace and then it's in your archive. Then also you obviously have the option to respond to the email. <laughs> um, so you, you can just respond to the email. If you want to save the one that the other person sent, you just as I said, categorize it and put it into archive. Then if it's something like someone sent you a presentation that you're going to have to look at later or anything like that, you put it into the references. And then also if you set up a to-do folder, if it's something that you can't or won't respond to right away, then you put it in there and then you go through it later. So your inbox should look like this when you're done with it or possibly if you do it like me, if you have a couple of things like, I'm not very bothered by having like two emails I know I'm gonna have to respond to later today or tomorrow or whatever lying in my inbox. So if you do it that way, that's also fine. But I try to keep my email inbox so that I don't have to scroll in it, which is kind of funny, but like th that's the maximum amount of emails that I want because more than that and I will feel overwhelmed. And then when you do this, it's also very easy to find things. If you're looking for an old email, you just go into the archive and then you s click in the search box and then you can search for things that are categorized a certain way or you can search for a person and see who sent the email. It's super, super simple and you don't have to look through a million different folders, but you only look in the archive folder. I will not go into that in this video, but I recommend you to check out that video to quickly learn how you can easily see which emails you are CC'd into and therefore don't have to do anything about, but, but just maybe read them, and how to put in shortcuts to quickly sort through all of your emails. So go check that one out and I'll see you in my next video.